Hey, what's up guys? Uh, no one else has made a video like this talking about uh, the botting that's been going on recently within the Funko Pop community and just how releases are being secured by people and how many of us manual users or manual users in general are striking out on these releases. Um, so this is the most notorious or most successful bot I should say in terms of when it comes to these releases and this is a bot called Shopify Bot. And as the name suggests, it's a bot that is used to uh, purchase off websites that are on the Shop Shopify platform. So uh, websites that are on the Shopify platform typically don't have a low level of security and anti-bot measures. And this, along with how successful this bot is, makes it very easy for people to bot Funko releases. And I'll just go over quickly how this bot works. And then at the end, I'll go over some methods that... Uh, we could employ to help prevent this and things that manual users can use to better you know to to have a better advantage when it comes to securing these manual releases so first of all let me just quickly show you what the bot does so the main premise of this bot is that you can set up tasks either monitoring through keywords url or shopify variants and this helps your bot pick up the ta pick up the product and then check it out so profiles is where people can set up as many billing and uh, shipping addresses as well as credit cards that they have which pretty much means that they can circumvent the Funko shop rule which is uh, one per customer or one per household so if I can put the address of my neighbor the address of my friend the address of my workplace that's, that's four addresses right there which means hypothetically that's four more that I could grab than somebody else could so this is one way that people circumvent the one per household rule with this bot. This bot allows you to make multiple profiles, as you can see here, delivery address, payment details, and billing details, and then you can add those here at the bottom when you click save, and then you have multiple profiles that you can ship to. Next will be the adding task section. So actually, this bot was originally intended for copying, or not copying, I should say, getting shoes and clothing on really hyped releases. So you can see stores here like Bape, um, stores like TSM, uh, Kith, uh, just to name a few. You can, you can see them here as I'm scrolling. You might recognize some of these names. Easy Supply, for instance, where people could go ahead and cop really uh, hyped shoes and sneakers. But since we uh, since people have realized that there is some value in also, you know, flipping, as the community puts it, flippers, uh, flipping um, Funko Pops, the bot developer actually added uh, Funko Shop to the to this bot, as you can see here. So the main way that a bot can you know, monitor or keep looking and waiting for a product is through keywords URL variants. So for instance, for keywords, um, if I knew that the bot was releasing, say, like a Hulk Funko or something, I could add plus Hulk here, plus Funko, which means my bot is going to be looking for products that satisfy having the word Hulk in it and having the word Funko in it. And I say this is like the first way that um, the website could combat botters. What a lot of companies have done off late is even though the keyword might show Hulk and Funko in the actual script or the HTML script of the website, they put a complete they put like a they put like a mess of numbers and letters um, in the words so that bots can't pick it up. So that's one way that you know Funko Shop could actually prevent bots. They could just change the way keywords work on their website so that bots wouldn't be able to pick them up. And the next way the bots pick them up would be the URL. So for instance, I could just go to Funko.shop, put that in here. And since Funko.shop is a Shopify platform, and since they usually typically only load one product onto the website because it's used for, you know, pop for a pop-up or a release, I would just have to put this. I could pick any size and I could pick any address, one quantity, one task, because I don't want to get my order canceled from ordering too much. And then I could click, ca click CAPTCHA. In case I think the website will have a captcha at the time of checkout, which means that the bot can actually solve a captcha, which is another reason why it beats manual users. It just it can solve a captcha by itself, even though only humans are supposed to be able to, and then they can proceed to checkout. So then, as you can see here, I have my task all set up, and I could set up like you know I could set up a hundred of these or even ten, depending on how many addresses I have, and and then I could start them when drop time, uh, when I think it's going to drop, or when I see that someone says that it's gone live on Reddit. Or I can use something called proxies, and proxies are how, I mean, the, I'll say the best way that how bot users beat manual users. What a proxy is, um, is something that I would load here in my proxy list, and what a proxy does is that it allows you to have multiple IP addresses, and what that means is that you can keep refreshing or pinging the website from different addresses without the risk of getting banned. 
which means that bots can constantly be checking and monitoring on the Funko Shop website 24-7, you know, more than any manual user could realistically do. And the minute it detects a new product, it will check out. Now, that's the main reason why bots are beating manual users, because they can check out pretty much any time because they're constantly looking for a new product. So there's not really a way that Funko Shop can combat can, can combat people using proxies, so I won't really talk about that. But once again, one way that they could is by changing the way keywords work on their websites. But if people are just using you know, a monitor input of the URL or a Shopify variant, uh, getting a variant is usually kind of hard, but if you can get manage to get a Shopify variant, you can also check out with that. And uh, before I go into the next part, like I think the best way that Funko could combat bot users is to not drop stuff on their Shopify platform. And as you as you can see here, uh, Funko has two websites. They have Funko Shop and they have Shop Funko com. Now Shop Funko com is not on the Shopify platform. I actually don't know what platform it's on, but it's not on the Shopify platform, which means uh, the majority of bot users will not be able to grab products that drop on this platform. As I said earlier, Shopify Dash, this is a bot only for the Shopify website platform. And as such, um, the drop that happened today, the Zodiac Funko, uh, the, the, the Taurus Ready Funko, uh, if, say, hypothetically, a bot user wanted to get this, they wouldn't be able to because <coughs> it's not on the Shopify platform. However, Funko Dash Shop is on the Shopify platform, and this is where... Uh, the company has been putting most of their really hyped releases, uh, things like the, the Emerald Batman and, and uh, Emerald Batman and some and a few other ones. So, <coughs> uh, if it's on this website here, Funko Dash Shop, this is a Shopify website, which means bots can and will pick it up, and they can get as many as they have addresses, and they work really, really fast. Um. So yeah, so I think the best way for the company to combat bots would be to just exclusively drop on this website uh, because I'm sure there are there are bots on this website too but most people are using this bot right here it's one of the most popular bots right now and that would combat I would say like 90 per 95 percent of bot users and another way that the community can generally combat bots users is to not make posts like this uh, Bots and flippers are going to be ready. This was posted about an hour ago, and it's a picture of Toucan Sam, which is to be, which is the um, what people suspect are going to is going to be dropping on Friday. When you make posts like this, you pretty much just send a big indicator to people who are on the subreddit. You know, anybody can go on the subreddit, not just people who use bots or people who know what Funko is. They can easily come look at the subreddit and be like, "Oh, something hyped is coming out." Clearly, the community is excited about it, which means that I can buy this and sell it to them for more. There is some sort of hype around this, which means that I can make money off of this. When you make posts like this, you just send an alert out to everybody, regardless of whether they're part of the community and they really care about the community or not. So, for example, I know, I know a lot of people who are on the subreddit right now who are just lurking, waiting to see what's going to be the next big Funko so that they can grab as many as possible and then sell it to you for more on eBay. So, making posts like this does not help your case and as some users have pointed out of course they are you guys give them every reason to be ready you give them the warning on the supply what you get the countless leaks posts and retweets yeah and when you guys have the, you know the live reddit threads where you guys show stock that's just again more information that you're giving to users who are not necessarily caring about the community but rather caring about making a profit and now i'm going to show you some ways that you know manual users can actually um in increase their chances so the first thing i recommend that all of you get is a uh, Chrome, it's a Chrome monitor extension, page monitor. Yep, that's that's the one. <coughs> so I recommend you add this to your Chrome browser. It's an extension, really useful. It can be used for multiple mul multitude of things, but most uh, it can be used mostly for this. So what I could do is I can go to Funko dot shop dash shop dot com, and I can click here, and I can click monitor this page, and then if I go to options, make the check interval like. I'd say six seconds, um, or let's, let's say nine seconds or seven seconds. Uh, any more than five or s five, to s <coughs> any more than five to seven seconds, the the website will ban you because you're just pinging it way too much. And the, and then you can put a sound alert of a chime, which means that's the sound it's going to make. And essentially, what this does is that it constantly checks the website for any sort of change. So if any sort of change takes place on this in this website right here, you will get a ping and a notification here. 
So say, you know, it's Wednesday or Friday morning and you're on your computer around 10 o'clock, you could start monitoring this website. And, you know, the minute a new product releases or the website changes drastically, you will get a notification and you can just click here and it'll pop up here and you can click the website. And if there's a new product, you can go ahead and check out right away. So that's one way where manual users can, you know, keep up with bots because they can always have a monitor running and a monitor will help them check out. And the next thing that bot users can use, or not bot users, that manual users can use is an autofill extension. I mean, you, you could also just use a normal autofill for Chrome, but an autofill extension is really useful too. Um, there's a lot of videos on how to use this, so I'm not going to go into it too much because it's, it's a bit complicated. So you, you could just stick, stick to Chrome autofill, but I would recommend you have some sort of autofill system because that's the only way you're going to be able to keep up. You're not going to be able to type in your credit card and name on really, you know, on things which a lot of bot users are going for and there's very little stock. So I recommend you set up an autofill and I recommend that you have a monitor that's always watching out for you and letting you know when something new is coming. So um, I hope that video helped. If anybody has any uh, questions, feel free to DM me. I know I'll probably get hate for this video, either from, you know, from people from the Funko community or people from the botting community. Either way, I just wanted to make the information, get provide a video on it, and I'm not really somebody to bot Funko. It's not really worth my time that I see, and I feel like it takes away from people who are really passionate about the community and really passionate about, you know, collecting these things. So I hope that helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on, on Reddit.